This is Twit. What could go wrong? Lori, what could go wrong? They they could turn their back on Mac and turn it into an iPad, which is, is <clears throat> what some people are afraid of. That's that's a thing that we could be afraid of. I know that they're. I they, feel like the, they're this saying is, right now. This was where they said no. This is where they proved to me no that they're not going right. to do that. Right, but you know, and I agree with that. But they also said they were never going to make a tiny iPad, and they That's also true. said they were never going to make a giant iPhone. So yeah. we like if if we're talking about what potentially goes could go wrong to me. That's probably the biggest fear that Mac users have right now. Not that the ARM chip won't be as good, you know, that they, they could just go back to Intel, no big deal, but that that they will move forward and that they will actually eliminate Mac OS and replace it with iPad OS. That's probably the biggest thing that could go wrong. In I a think. way, the, the, the risk uh, that they would make chips that wouldn't live up to the promise is not a problem because they already have made chips that live up to the promise, right? So... Mm. In a way, they've proven yeah. they can do the chips, right? I feel like I feel like hubris is their biggest risk yeah. right now, right? That they're gonna say, "Oh, we're on top of the world. We dominate here. We're gonna we have the freedom to make some decisions," and they're gonna make some decisions that um, that go wrong. I feel like sometimes Apple, it, this seems they're on top of the world in one level, and then when you're on top of the world, you are your own worst enemy because there's nobody else to be your worst enemy. And so, like th they haven't shown this, but what if they say? Time to close it off so it's only the Mac App Store. Time to get rid of the command that line. That would be bad. Time, right? Yes. But I don't think they're going to because no. they could have done it no. now and they right. didn't. But that, right. I think, the danger where we've seen it with some of these App Store controversies, right? Where they're their own worst enemy in pushing it too far, in allowing the bureaucracy or in their motivation to increase their services revenue to go against what the what their customers want. I, I think that there's some serious risk in there. I guess the other risk would be on the pro end, what can they do? They have not been asked to do a uh, Mac Pro kind of product, uh, which architecturally is very different from an iPhone, right? Think in a way that maybe a little laptop is. For them to make the new Mac Pro after announcing it, it took them years. Mm -hmm. And that was on an architecture they already were working yeah. on. Although you got to know yeah. that that Mac Pro was built with them knowing they're going to ARM. So yeah. I suspect there is a right. plan there of some sort. <laughs> in but like, hindsight. we haven't seen, <laughs> right. for, the, for the people who demand. Uh, that kind of processor power, demand that kind of GPU power. Uh, slots, how do you do, like there's so many things and we only have hints, like they changed the boot process in Mac OS. That's an interesting example where they, I wrote a whole article about it. What happened there? How, I, don't, I didn't hear how, about like, that. Well, iOS and, and iPad OS don't, they just boot onto the boot disk and that's it. And on the Mac, you can like hold down uh, keys right. and you can do recovery right. and you can boot into a different thing. And they had to add all of that to the bootloader that previously didn't have to do that because it was the iPad and iPhone bootloader. And they did it. They added all of that functionality so that a Mac behaves like a Mac. You, it makes me wonder actually if one day you might be able to partition your iPad and have two different versions of iPad OS and mm -hmm. choose which one you want to boot into. Developers would love that. But they got it on the Mac. So I, I feel like they're they're making those right decisions. Um, but you know, there's there's risk there. There is risk that they that they can't push like they're gonna have to uh, let me put it this way. If you think about the trash can Mac Pro, which was kind of a failure because they made some bad bets on technology and where they thought technology was going, there is that question of like, what if they make a bet about the GPU and the slots and the other high-end processing needs that their pro customers want in video and in other places like that, and they think they can do it, and then they get there and they can't do it. That, I think, is a big risk. Not that they won't. I think that they probably have some great confidence there, but th sometimes their confidence is misplaced, and they've never done it before when it comes to this architecture. Yeah, when you get that big, right? I mean, I think Jason's right that being your own worst enemy is the biggest potential flaw there. It's, it's sort of buying into your own hype, right? And, and that is certainly something that Apple has been accused of doing and demonstrated doing. We don't have to look much farther than the whole butterfly keyboard fiasco of the last few years to see that they are willing to make design decisions that they are absolutely confident is the best thing ever. And then it turns out maybe it's not. Maybe that was a bad decision. And when you're that big a company, it's like turning a battleship, right? Like you can't you can't immediately just yank everything and change it back. You're you're selling millions upon millions of units. So they have a lot of risk in terms of making a bad decision that is multiplied by the scale they're working at and really is going to be hard to dig themselves out of if they do in fact make a bad decision somewhere along the line there. But yeah, I mean, once you've 
you know, we used to look often at Apple in terms of its rivalries, like Apple versus IBM or Apple versus Microsoft or Apple versus Google. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that Apple has kind of put itself in its own category, but that comes with a lot of risk because of that. Because when you're not fighting actively or defining yourself against your competitors, it means that you're not challenged as much necessarily. So you don't have to respond to them and say like, oh, they're doing this. We need to find a way to get better. We need to really like improve our edge. You get complacent. And that's that's a real risk, I think, with Apple here.